My name's Hoodwill, and you may know me as an author and narrator for The Wraith Times, or as the audio guy for creators like Arsenal Pass, The Manor Podcast, and Fabled Academy. You may have seen me posting card images for Fabrary that I clean up during preview seasons, or know me as the guy who can't stop playing Bolton on Cardboardcast. If you only know me from this shirt at tournaments, or don't know me at all, it's because I don't top eight events. Enter this guy. The first ever flesh and blood world champion, Michael Hamilton, is here to help me learn from my mistakes through video recaps. Maybe you'll learn something too in this series called Hoodwill and Hamilton. Okay, so I'm pausing here because I think there's a couple things that already are at least like points of discussion. Okay. So first, she's on Snapdragon Scalers, which is not... Uh, not something I've seen very often in Dromai. So I guess I would expect her to have Snatch and maybe some other on hits just from seeing this. Mm -hmm. I think it's just like uh, Snaps and I guess like most Dromais are on dust, Red Dust Up, but maybe Snatch isn't the most common and there's probably some. And then I think later in the game, because we both, like you played this and I watched through, I, we see that she has Coax the Commotion also, which makes sense given the Snapdragon Scalers. Yeah. Um, and then on your side, uh, hat and gloves are pretty typical in two. Uh, oh, I, th I don't know if you even have other gloves you could play, but hat and gloves are mask momentum to kill the dragons makes sense. Blossomous Springs stood out to me a little bit because um, against Dromai, you spend some chunk of your damage killing the dragons. So... I would expect the game to go at least like a little bit longer than normal. Okay, um, so maybe Tunic would have been better. I think I think I would be interested in like comparing this to Tunic and kind of watching the game and like keeping that in mind as we go. If that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, and then I think Snapdragons make sense. You could play Tide Flippers, but I wouldn't really see you wanting to pitch to AB anything unless it was like lethal damage. So, I think Snapdragons make sense. Cool. Dromai doesn't do. Yeah. Okay. So. so we're going to jump into our first turn. Did uh, did you win the die roll and choose to go second, or did she win the die roll? Mm, good question. This is over two weeks ago. Almost three weeks. Okay. I, don't, <laughs> I don't remember, honestly. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah. I can go back well, and check if the if the die roll was on camera like at the beginning or not, but no, I, I don't. I don't think it really matters who who chose at this point. I'm just like, uh, I was just curious. It seemed like you going second was pretty advantageous for you here because she both gave you an opportunity to filter by just presenting a four power attack and basically spent her turn making one ash and arsenaling, which is like you getting to filter and her just getting one ash and an arsenal. That's that seems like a pretty good deal for going second to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think you and I had talked about wanting to go second before, so if I did win the die roll, that's probably what I chose. Cool. Uh, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. Sure. <laughs> I hear you say, I don't think you're going to use the snap sister. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wild guess there. Mm-hmm. So you block with blue rising resentment and do you, I, I don't know what that other card was so i guess you probably don't remember either mm -mm, no i couldn't see yeah sorry there's some glare in this game store too where we recorded this yeah her her equipment was i didn't realize this was snapdragon scalers at first when i started watching it but mm -hmm. figured it out at some point yeah I think it's I unexpected i think this was like the week before worlds like the sunday before okay, um that, and she that was would... trying some stuff out i think she was like you know i don't want to be running um some of the weaker cards in dromai or like cards that she felt like just were not very impactful so i think subbing mm -hmm. in um some attack actions was her plan with this build yeah, I'm a big fan of subbing in some attack actions <laughs> for some of yes. your mediocre class cards. So <laughs> I can get behind that. Coast <laughs> and Snatch are both very good cards. Uh, 
just waiting. Okay, here we go. Waiting on me to play something as usual. Oh, she was also trying to figure out quick and tokens, and I think that may have also distracted you too. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because you did respond to it. Okay, so blue brand leading is not ideal. Not ideal. Agreed. Okay. That's part of why I, I was wondering what your second card you blocked with was. And also, um, it's possible that if this brand was in your hand also, that maybe you should have blocked with more than two cards. So... Just the, if your hand was like pretty bad, but I don't I don't know what your hand was, so it's just hard to, to know. filter more. Yeah, 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 just to filter one more card because Droma is not she's not gonna fatigue you. It's most most decks can't fatigue five because Searing Ember Blade plus Phoenix Flame every turn is a lot yeah. to fatigue through, and then uh, it's also even or. She also doesn't have a weapon, so like even if she could fatigue you, then eventually you're still gonna kill her in the end, probably because you have a weapon and she doesn't. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, sh she also mentioned this here, but it looks like you missed your Shugo trigger off the first double strike because we ran into double strike should proc it. I did. Yeah, yeah. We went back and talked about that later. I think those two cards are probably what I had turn one, if I had to guess. The double strike and lava burst? Yeah. That makes sense that you would want to keep those together, so... Blocking with the other two cards makes sense. So, Vinny is... Good old Vinny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah, there could also be some slow play from me asking her to review all the dragons every time. <laughs> Just because I haven't played against Dromai very much. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, an, inter an, an interaction that you, uh, I think you missed later that I'll bring up when we get to the point. But you... Okay. It, it's not like intuitive. It's something that you like. You just like have, have to have played five versus Dromai and thought about it before. To, like, <laughs> no. Gotcha. But I'll, I'll bring it up when it, we get there. I'm gonna skip forward a, a little bit. Okay, so it looks like you take the 9 damage. I think that makes a lot of sense, unless you have 2, 3 blocks and still have an efficient way to kill the the Vinny on your turn. So, like, if you have, like, red starter plus a blue plus 2, 3 blocks, I'd probably block out the Vinny and just go red starter into blue to swing sword into using the last resource to Phoenix mm. Flame the Vinny. But if, if your hand doesn't do that, it's just, like, as a 2 block in one of those spots or something, then, like, yeah. I think you just have to eat the 9. I just realized we didn't have life showing on the table anywhere either. Yeah, that made it a little bit tricky at spots. I think later in the game, there's a time where you say we're uh, 11 all or something. Oh, and okay. I thought you said seven all, but it <laughs> at least gave me some context of what life totals were. <laughs> So we're going into your second turn now. You each have a quicken token. Is yeah. this your quicken token? Yeah. Uh, little yeah. sleeve. Okay. So 
you're popping Blossom here. Uh, I was I wanted to compare it to Tunic. If you had Tunic, your Tunic would be at two this turn, so you wouldn't be able to get this one resource. Okay. For what that's worth. thinking now what my questions were when I played this game like afterwards I think there was one point later in the game where she says ooh I like when you block like start blocking and I was like well I would just die if I didn't block so I don't <laughs> I don't know if there was a way uh, like an out I could have played to here without blocking but that's towards the end of the game so we'll get there yeah that that makes sense I think I remember hearing her say that playing mind games with me. So, I guess I, I want to play through this turn, and then I want to stop and talk about it. Okay. But I think I think this this was a pretty interesting turn. That like there's there's like a couple discussion points on it. I think. I need to read spreading flames also. Plus one for draconic attacks if their power is less than the draconic chain. So it doesn't apply to this Ember Blade here. Right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I think I just heard her say, should we have life gain on the screen? Sorry, life. can you say that again? I think I just heard where she said life totals weren't on the screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think she said she was going to 32 here from this, 5 from the Blaze, 3 from the Everblade, but didn't she take damage the previous turn? Maybe I misheard her about um, life totals. Yeah. I'm sure I, I did. So this should be coming in for 3. Yeah. You said... You say 2 at Vinny here, but it doesn't... So it should be 3 because of the Art of War and the Spreading Flames, but it doesn't yeah. actually matter because she was killing the dragon anyway. Oh, yeah, I remember this now. So, what, what were you trying to do here when you are reordering the things? Um, I think I was thinking about how... Um, 
like I would draw off of this hitting and then um, potentially have um, like I would at least get one card draw instead of her being able to block because I'm threatening um, card draw twice because of mask and snatch on the same link. Um, I was thinking I could at least get one card draw because the snatch would hit Vinny. Okay, okay. And I think I think pointing the snatch at Vinny is reasonable because it's it's two more damage than the spread than the Phoenix Flame, but getting the card draw off of it is pretty good. <laughs> like it's probably the card is probably worth more than two damage. Yeah. On the spreading flames art of war turn. That does mean you have to it use your snap snaps, dragon, so. Right. It looks like Snatch might be still going face if she's talking about blocking it. Okay. But we'll we'll go back and talk about the whole the I think what I think would maybe be a different way you could sequence this turn. Yeah, why? I'm wondering what I was thinking now too, because it doesn't make any sense for me not to hit that in that chain link, regardless of it being the flame or snatch, so I don't know. Looks like you just go back and do it the other way anyway. Yeah. Okay. So, so this turn, uh, this was like an Art of War spreading flames turn where you use Blossom, which those should be like some of your most powerful turns ideally, but it didn't seem like it was like a fine turn, but not like amazing, right? Not a blowout, right? Yeah. So I think the first point of awkwardness is that you use Blaze Headlong with the Quicken token when you uh, when you had a snatch that you wanted to play that turn. Because if you use the Quicken token on the snatch, then you would be. I think I might. I think I might have drawn the snatch. Was the snatch from Arsenal? Uh, let's go back. I think you. I think were you were you about to say you think you drew the snatch from the Art of War? Yeah. Okay, I think that is likely the case. So, <laughs> I guess because I think the Art of War was from Arsenal. Oh yeah, that's right. It was. It was. Yep. So, I guess. What do you gain by saving the Art of War here and waiting till after you play the Blaze Headlong to play the Art of War? Um, if there's a, a... So I I don't know what's in her arsenal, but mm -hmm. I know that at, from playing Mara, um, she likes to put defense reactions in the arsenal against me. Mm -hmm. So if that's coming in for four and she plays the defense reaction, I can Art of War and get over it. And then that's one chain link hit. Okay. That makes sense. So, if you play the Art of War first, do you think she would block this Blaze Headlong for five? Mm, I don't know. I, I guess, is there... If I can play it as a reaction is there what would be the benefit of playing it face up i guess so so the benefit of playing it first i think this is like a pretty is weird that just, situation i get to choose whatever the first link is from my draw cards yeah okay. so if if you play it first and you draw snatch yeah then suddenly maybe you want to lead on the snatch instead of leading on the blaze headlong okay and five is also a pretty good breakpoint for threatening your mask triggers. So when you're going to have a pretty wide turn, you don't really care. Uh, like if they're going to block out like an attack, you want them to block out like the first attack or the last attack, right? Not like a middle attack. Right. 
So like the ones that are hardest to block, the fives, like this blade, this blade's headlong is a five. You kind of want to aim them towards being in the middle if it's possible to do that. Okay. So for that reason, the combination of those two things, I, I would want to see you just play the Art of War before you play your first attack. Got it. Okay. So yeah, had I done that and drawn the Snatch, I could have gone Snatch first. Mm -hmm. Um five so that'll probably hit that's one chain link plus i draw so i would get that draw oh and then, or sorry sorry go ahead go ahead keep that thought because i want to hear what you're going to say um yeah i was just thinking the other cards that i would still have are like the two blade or uh the blaze headlong and then the spreading flames so yeah i guess i could have gone like snatch for five spreading flames for four at the uh, I would be tempted to do it at Vinny on Chain Link 2 at that point because I know it would hit and then I could use the Blaze Headlong on Link 5 so she would have to block with the defense reaction from Arsenal and a card from hand to stop Mask and I'd still have Go again. I... Because spreading flames would only be four, and I don't want her to use the defense reaction to stop that that easily. Mm -hmm. I would probably just let her block out chain link two with her defense reaction, because you're probably going to go five chain links wide, but I don't remember exactly what your hand was. So, like, if she uses her defense react on chain link two, it's hard to block out the other three chain links. Because you yeah. could go, like... Uh, chain link three would be. It could be. Let's see. So you had blaze headlong, so then we, amber blade, and then phoenix flame. Yeah. So it could be. If she blocks chain link two, I'd probably sword. Vinny. Third, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's I, I, tricky. I like sorting after the first draconic link because it's just that's heads up information. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's different when there's a dragon on the board because you know you can just basically place the hit in the chain anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think if you go snatch for five, there's a reasonable chance she blocks it out. But then, if she blocks that out, it's going to be really hard for her to stop your mask for the rest of the turn. Yeah. So, if you go Snatch for five, and then you go, and say she blocks it out, then you could go Spreading Flames for four at her. And if she doesn't block that out, then it's... Then you have Blaze Headlong Sword and Phoenix Flame left, so you can go, like... Hmm... You could go like blaze headlong at her. No, I'm trying to think. I don't know what the optimal sequencing to play yeah. around the mask there is, or play to set up the mask there. Right. And I don't want but, to lose too much value by hitting Vince Arakai, so I feel like I probably would sword the dragon. I just don't know where. Mm. Or if she ever lets two attacks in a row hit, you could Phoenix Flame the Dragon right. to cash in your thing. Phoenix Flame and Sword would both be worth three damage, so it doesn't really like matter that much. The difference is the Phoenix Flame is threatening the yeah. uh, card draw off the mask, potentially, and then like you have to use it towards the end, so it doesn't cost a bunch of resources. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, I guess... Uh, More of this chain link is... <laughs> probably should have done Art of War first. Yeah, Art, Art of War first, because t taking away the information from your opponent is nice, but you're going to get more value out of all of your cards if you know what you're working with for the most part. Yeah. Especially, like, it's not even it's not like a, a hero with access to, like, Ice Disruption, like Oldheim or Icelander. So, like, the information is helpful to her, but you can sequence your, your whole turn optimally if you know what your hand is from the start. Yeah. Especially since we have this quicken token, 
And using this blaze headlong doesn't need to use the quicken token. So if we draw like snatch specifically, then we could uh, lead with that. Yeah. And, and get and get 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 good value out of the quicken token. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the end of this turn since we re rewound it. Cool. Yeah. I didn't hear what your life total was. I heard she was at 29, I think. Mm -hmm. mm, if I took another five, I could be at 26. Okay. If I took nine that first time, right? Nothing on the first turn, nine the second turn, and then five. Okay. That sounds right. So, I uh, I want to pause again. So, you ended up having... I guess, I'm like, would it have been better to cash in the second Art of War last turn? Instead of arsenaling it? Yeah, fair. Um... So, a uh, situation that could have come up last turn, is, I guess this is kind of like piling in about the, the Art of Warring first. If you do the Art of War first last turn, you draw into the Snatch, you play the Snatch for five with the go again from the Quicken token. And then you have the second Art of War that if she blocks for exactly five, you can play another Art of War, kind of force through the draw on the Snatch by pumping it up to six. Mm. And that, I think that would probably like getting a snatch hit on a double art of war turn with a five card hand would be very likely to just like put away the game at that point. Yeah. So I guess the, the main question to be keeping in the forefront of my mind then is what's the benefit to playing it second instead of just playing it out? Like, yeah. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, something you have to, like... It's easy to see in hindsight you drew the snatch off the Art of War, so it would have been better to have it first to lead with the snatch. But, like, you won't always know that beforehand, and that's something that, like, you'll just, like... That's kind of why these replay reviews are so useful, is you're like, oh, I drew snatch here, and if I led on Art of War, then I would have had the snatch first, and I could have started with snatch instead yeah. of starting with the blaze headlong. And that's, like something that you won't necessarily like ever realize if you're just playing the games and not right. going back and reviewing. Yeah. Very true. I hope there's a lot of things like that that I learned from this. I'm also jumping I'm jumping around a lot. The previous turn, depending on your hand, it also might have been reasonable to hold off on the Art of War and just play like Blaze Headlong plus Sword plus Phoenix Flame the Dragon plus some some finisher. I just leave the Art of War in Arsenal. But I, if you had the second Art of War in your hand, it's kind of awkward to do that. 
because yeah. you can't really spend the second one. But but that's uh, also another potential. But <laughs> all right, I'm gonna keep going. Sorry. No, that's fine. Please stop as much as as much as you want to. Okay. I'm working on soaking up all of this, so <laughs> the more you give me, the better. Cool. Um, so this is for two. This is for four. That looks like a blue. I can't tell. Do I run blue? That's, that's no, a red. So. It's a red. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't think the... Is the rising a blue? That looks blue to me, too. I think they're both red. They're both red. Okay. She did also say take four. Got it. Okay, yeah. So then... And I don't think I run blue mounting, so... Okay. But I, I like the mounting here on chain link three, because it's like the five break point that is kind of tough for her to hit for a mask. I think that's good sequencing. Cool. She had to use her furnace to block it, basically. So, pretty happy with that. You're, like, thinking for a while here about whether you want to play the belittle or not. I think it's... I think both playing it and holding it are both pretty reasonable. You've gone through two of your Art of Wars, and Belittle's a lot weaker without Art of War. So, since you don't really have, you only have one Art of War left in your deck, you're not like that likely to get a lot of value out of it. And playing it here, you're going to waste the one resource anyway, and it gets plus one from Art of War. So it's like, it's like pretty valuable to play it there. It's worth four there when you play it. So I, I think I do like, I do like that you ended up just playing it out there. Cool. Then she blocked out the Ember Blade also to keep your mask from triggering when you attack with Flame. So that's yeah. that's just a good block from her. Maybe, I guess maybe you could play the Ember Blade on Chain Link Four to try to discourage her from blocking it right away. And maybe that sequencing is slightly better because there's a little bit more unknown information from your opponent. But so that would I, have been I before think... the second belittle. Yeah, so just like okay. this is that's really small and nitpicky. But if you go Searing Emberblade after the Mounting Anger, there's a world she doesn't use a three block on it because she doesn't know your last card's Belittle. Mm, but yeah. once you reveal the Belittle, she knows that you're not going to play like a Snatch or something at the end. So True. she's she's just like kind of it, it is the correct block from her, her face up to block the Searing Emberblade. Whereas if you do Searing Emberblade on Chainlink Four, then it's less clear that she needs to block it there. Yeah. So basically, the if if she doesn't block it there, then she either has to figure out a way to block your belittle for four, or she has to block your phoenix slam for two. Yeah. Which, if she blocks the phoenix slam for two, you're just like getting one free point through. Right. Yeah. I yeah. I should have listened to myself and <laughs> swung the sword and not given her more information like I was talking about. But <laughs> yeah, you were just talking. Yeah, you were just talking about that. <laughs> But yeah, so that that would have been a spot because you had to you had to pitch the second or the blue minnowism to swing the sword there, but she knew about it because you revealed it off the right. when you searched it off the little. The yeah. First portal. Yep. 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 Yeah, I did not know any of the dragons had a shield. That's So this is actually the interaction that I was uh, saying I wanted to bring up later. Um, this dragon has a shield counter, which prevents the first three damage that would be dealt to it or something, or like the first source mm -hmm. of damage. It prevents the first three damage from that source. Um, if you line up your Shuko trigger with this dragon, Shuko says damage from this attack can't be prevented. Uh... So... If you attack it with a shoot code card, it'll deal the damage and eat the shield counter, and the shield counter won't prevent anything. Nice. Okay. So, uh, I'm gonna wait till we get to your turn, but I'll 
I'll I'll let you see the line you take, and then I'll tell you what the what a line that would have just been slightly better would have been because of the Shuko interaction. We're gonna watch me throw away three damage on his shield first. <laughs> or 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 I will actually I'll I'll let you uh, kind of talk through possible lines when we get there, and yeah. you can kind of see your hand. Skip forward a little bit. Okay, so I, I think blocking with the blue three block was correct. So you have redundant blues in your hand. Just might as well save the three life. Put that in. So yeah, I sh should not have done that. So you spent... I had in hand. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, you're good. I was just gonna say uh, I'll wait and see what else I have in hand, and then reorder the turn. Mm -hmm. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say you spent six damage on the dragon there. Yeah. Um. So I had a blue. This does threaten the mask trigger on the phoenix flame, which is kind of annoying for her, but. If I have a lava burst. Yeah, if this is lava burst, I would have just saved that for the dragon. It's uh it's salt the wound. Oh, okay, well then, I'll yeah. Let, I'll let you play it out, but... Yep. So, like, so I think if your I'll... hands... Um, oh, 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 yeah, if my hands... So I could have done that. Uh, I sold the wound, so I could have... Pitched the salt. One, two... Hmm. I don't think any of my twos could have gotten to three except for Salt the Wound. Because mm -hmm. Lava Vein Loyalty would just go from one to two with Shuko. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I would probably order the turn the same, but the Ronin and the Sword would be at her. And then I'd probably play Salt on the end here at the Dragon, if it was still on the board. Yeah, yeah, I... I, th I that is how I would order the turn. I'd go Ronin, her, Emberblade, her, Phoenix Flame, her, and then salt the wounds on the dragon, triggering the Shuko yeah. to kill it through the endurance and the counter. Shield. Yep, cool. And then that just presents seven damage at her, whereas this line is only presenting uh, five total damage at her. So it's just yeah. basically worth two more damage. I wonder if she knows that about Shuko's and just didn't say anything to me. I can't imagine she doesn't. Uh, after, I, after the fact, I mean. Like, not, not beforehand, I, but even after yeah, the game. I, like, she didn't say anything, so. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. It is kind of a weird ruling. And, like, Shuko's ignore damage prevention comes up so rarely that it's, like, very easy to forget about it. But yeah. when it does come up, it can be pretty impactful. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Mar is a good Dromai, and she plays Phi enough that, like, she always feels really confident about the Phi matchup. So. From the Dromai side? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't. I would imagine that she probably knows. Maybe not. You know, I don't want to. 
you know, no judging or anything. I'm just, I'm surprised that she didn't say anything. She's usually like pretty good about calling things out to me. So mm -hmm. I was just surprised. Maybe she doesn't know. It, it could also be, it could also be something where, uh, she also just wasn't thinking about it because she's like trying to th sequence her blocks her and stuff, turn, but not yeah. really. Yeah. Whereas, like, if she was in the phi seat trying to figure out how to sequence that turn on her side, she probably she might know, but it didn't even occur to her when she was just on the other side of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I lost track of turn count. I think you just had your fourth turn. I think so. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, so Kay. this is her fifth turn. I think. Yeah. Because yeah. I know your first Art of War turn was your second turn. Your second Art of War turn was your third turn. Yeah. And then I think that was the turn before this turn where you cleared the dragon as your fourth turn. Yeah. So this looks like she's probably Snapdragonsing this because she has two cards in hand. Mm-hmm. I forget what card she said she took out. Maybe like Billowing Mirage or something? Yeah, yeah. She just said if this was a Billowing Mirage, you would just be like, okay, okay take it. Yeah. <laughs> I totally would. Yeah. <laughs> and Billowing Mirage is especially awkward into Phi because like the, the the little Phoenix that you get off of, not the Phoenix, the Ashwing you get off of it just dies to Phoenix Flame at some point. Yeah. So it definitely feels, Snatch feels a lot better into Phi than pillowing so i'm not sure what happened here did you say no blocks and she snapdragons um i think so because she just pitched and she still has a card left so yeah she drew off that yeah it's so hard to tell but the snapdragon scalers definitely moved and now they're covered with glare yeah so yeah yeah i, I think saw. she did Mm hmm Yeah, I saw her flip the snaps. Cool. And now she's got three cards. One of which looks okay. to be Command and Conquer. So she pitches CNC to make the Ender Eye. This is a pretty scary turn from her. Two dragons and a snatch. And then here I th I thought I heard you say seven all, but I'm pretty sure you said eleven all. Based on you uh, saying 11, yep. you're on 11 later in the video. <laughs> yeah. So Necria comes in for how much? Necria is four. Uh, and then Yenderai is three. So four, three, four. So if I came down 11, I was at 22. Did I take a three? Did she attack me with... Yeah. So she attacked with both dragons for a total of seven and then the snatch for four. Right. Yeah, so, so it, it was 11. 11. But if I'm at 11 now, that means I was at 22 before. And I think I was at 26, is what we said. So I took a 4 at some point. Maybe I don't um, remember. I guess I must have on the last turn. Yeah, I can jump back real quick. I threw a blue 3 block in front of something. You blew 3 block this Yender Eye...
She e striked for five draw a card, and then mm -hmm. the next one was just the Yender Eye. And then I think I. That's where I block, I think, right? Yeah. Was it the Coax? So you, you ate a Coax and E strike for five. Oh, okay. I don't think this is the turn that she coaxed you, though. I don't remember. <laughs> I think you're probably right 11 all, but... Okay, that, that's just what I heard. Yeah, so. we, we can just keep going. I, I'm just trying to figure out where I missed a four, but that's fine. Okay, so... There we go. So here you start with a rise from the ashes. And then Phoenix slammed the... Okay, so... So again, pointed at the dragon. Another... She's like, it's the, it's the endurance counter. Yeah. Are you sure that's what you want to do? Yeah. And this is where she explains the Necria counters for attack and defend. Mm -hmm. So, I'm wondering, there might be another Shuko line to kill this Yender Eye. Mm -hmm. But let's let's see what your hand is before we start trying to figure it out. So red rise. <laughs> Picked out the Phoenix Slave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I saw a lava vein or something in there. Okay, I think I saw a Blaze Headlong. Okay. They're still talking about how the dragons work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the Blaze. <laughs> we can just reorder at the end. It's okay. I think that's a lava vein loyalty on the left. Okay. I can't. T oh, you have two lava vein. It's blaze, double lava vein, and phoenix flame. But I can't tell what color the lava veins are. It might be one blue, one red. Okay. Man, whoever records these streams really needs to make these. A lot more crisp, you know? More focus. Who, who records these it's streams? Me. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Phoenix Slam eats the shield. Comes in for three. Um... Yeah, so two from Shuko's. Um, let's see. And then you draw a Phoenix Lane off the Master. Okay, okay. So yeah, so I could have, I guess I could have held the Rise for the Lava Vein, and then that would have been a, or I, or... Yeah, okay, yeah. I could so have played the rise before one of the ones, I guess, to take it out. The rise before one of the ones. So, even uh, with Shukos, I mean. So let's say Shuko is the second, the second one this turn. Right. So, so, you, so had I started with like the blue, or no, I couldn't have started with blue lava vein loyalty because that requires draconic link first. Mm -hmm. So everything S requires you to play all three of these cards below the rise require yeah. you to play the rise before any of them can get going. Again. So you're kind of locked into starting with the rise. Yep. Um. So I don't, I don't know if there is hmm. a Shuko line to kill it here. I guess not. If one of those lava veins had been like Brand or Ronin, 
it would have been fine. Mm-hmm. So, there's a couple things I think you could have done differently because all four of these attacks ended up going at dragons, right? Mm-hmm. Which I guess that did get you the mass trigger. So it's not all bad because if you do something different, you might not get the mass trigger. If you like go like, because you could go rise, pick up the Phoenix Flame, and then blaze headlong the Necria, and then Phoenix Flame for one, the Endurance Counter, and then Lava Vein for three, the, the Dragon. So you'd still have the blue Lava Vein loyalty in your hand that you mm-hmm. could attack with, but it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't get you the mass trigger. Right. right, because you would have killed the endurance counter in the middle. Yep. So, what if you go rise, phoenix flame, the endurance counter away, same as before, and then you close the combat chain to put the phoenix flame in your graveyard? Then you could still send the blaze headlong at the necria, the lava vein loyalty at the ender eye, and the blue lava vein loyalty at the the necria, and draw a card. And then you'd be in the same spot. You'd have triggered your mask in the same spot. But you'd have a Phoenix Flame in the graveyard, so you could activate Fi's ability to pick up yeah. the Phoenix Flame and attacker for one. Yep. So I think that's I think that line is the same, but you're just plus one damage because you get an extra Phoenix Flame attack. The flame. Yep. Yep. The other thing that you could change, which wouldn't matter because your mask momentum drew you a zero cost, but Instead of attacking with the blue lava vein loyalty, you could pitch it for a sword swing as your second chain link to kill one of the dragons, and then use the red lava vein loyalty as your third chain link to finish off the last dragon and draw a card off the mask. Mm. And then when you fly back this Phoenix Flame, the Shuko will proc on it, so you'll get two damage out of this Phoenix Flame. Got so it. I think that's the best sequencing. Okay. Yeah, I I probably wanted to get the value uh, out of Shuko on that Lava Vein, which is why I played it. But yeah, it makes more sense with what you're saying. So just pitch it for the sword swing. Yeah. Yep. The downside of that is if you draw a blue off the mask, you're not going to get a lot of value out of your blue. But I think that's probably worth it to just like threaten one extra damage at her. Yeah. And then you'd also have a floating resource left over. I don't know if there's any one cost that you'd want to play there. You could draw Mounting Anger or Belittle or Art of War, and I don't think you'd play any of those. <laughs> if you had, like, Take the Tempo or something, that would be a one cost that you'd probably want to play, but I don't... I'm assuming there's no Take the Tempo in your deck. Mm-mm. No, there's not. Okay. And no Breaking Point either, I'd assume. <laughs> right, no Breaking Point. Okay. So, so yeah, I think... I think just breaking the chain here to get your Phoenix Flame back in the graveyard is the most important thing. Do you play three Flame Call Awakenings? I do, yeah. Okay. Okay. Just haven't seen one yet. And then this would have been turn five for Tunic. So it looks like you would have gotten two activations out of a tunic if you had tunic, but your turn two might have been a lot worse. So you, you're, you're talking about life totals. You go from 11 to 7?
Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm going to pause again. Yeah. So, it looks like you double strike the Chromite twice, where you could just have the first hit of the double strike attack her, because the Shuko will pump the second hit to two power to kill the Chromite anyway. Mm, yeah, true. So you drew two finishers off the mask here. Which can be fine if your arsenal's free, or you could pitch one to the Flame Call Awakening, since it looks like you have four reds and the Flame Call Awakening is going to cost one. So, can we pause for a sec? What are the chances that she blocks me swinging? Like, if we, if I played the first double strike chain link at her, if she blocks that, then mm. uh, I could potentially not get my mass trigger if she yeah. blocks whatever comes after the snatch also. That... That is true. If she if you send the first double strike at her and she blocks it, I would attack her again with your brand with Cinder Claw. Because then she has to block that one. And then if you depending on what your arsenal is, if there's any if it's a zero mm. cost go again, I would keep hitting I would keep attacking her as many times as I could to try to get that first hit off. And then and then do double the strike the chromai and then snatch the dragon. Because those are guaranteed two and three. If it is definitely a risk though that if you attack her, she could just block it and then that's not great. Yeah. So um, that that is a valid reason to double strike the Chromai first twice. So it's not strictly wrong to do it, but it's definitely like I think I, I would I would lean towards just double striking her for the one point of damage first. Yeah, because she's because like more in, she's not going to want to block if we're getting towards the end of the game here. So it's likely that she even if she blocks that one because it's an easy like one block she might not block, like you said, if I swung at her again right after that. So, And while a mass trigger is valuable, ultimately it ends up being worth, like, a card is worth, like, between three and four damage. So, like, giving up one damage for a slightly higher chance of getting your mass trigger is usually not worth it. I guess it's not slightly higher. It's, like, 100% versus whatever her block her chance of blocking are and she does have a skull cap with only one minus counter on it and a, her chest piece only has one minus counter on it i don't i think she's higher than you so she can't block with the skull cap so she'd have to give up her chest piece to stop it or block with a full card i don't think she'd ever if she does ever, ever blocking with a full card then like you're trading a card for a card off the mass trigger so that's like fine but if yeah. she blocks with her chest piece that's not that's not great so yeah, I, I could definitely see it being reasonable to go after the Chromite twice. Good to know, though, because I wasn't thinking about that being like a, just framing it in the way of like, OK, I know two and three are going to hit with these dragons. So one doesn't necessarily have to hit. I can threaten her with chain link one. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. like wherever in the chain, chain link one for a hit ends up being like that's yeah. a it's a floating and range yeah because you can just you can just send the next ones at the things yeah. i i just remembered i believe your arsenal is a phoenix slam from before yeah it is okay so it's not it's not something that you can easily go like double strike into brand into another zero cost because your zero cost would eat the shiko trigger <laughs> Mm, yeah, if she blocked the, out the first two, yeah. Yeah, though, if you go double strike her, she blocks it, and then you play your brand for three, and she blocks it. Then you can just use your Phoenix Flame. <laughs> you can still use your Phoenix Flame from Arsenal, and the second hit of the double strike, and just run them both into dragons if you want the draw. So like. If she blocks your first double strike, she blocks your brand for three. Then you can go second double strike, hits the Chromai, kills it with the Shuko counter. And then you can send the Phoenix Slam in your arsenal at the Miragi oh, for yeah. one damage and then snatch it. And that'll be three hits in a row. Yeah. So you aren't getting like... Like you, you give up the damage back, but you force her to use her equipment on your first double strike. Right, yeah. So it's it's like 
even in the world where she blocks both of those, it's slightly better because she had to block that, and like you end up getting the same amount of damage anyway. Yeah. But yeah, that that's definitely a good point that like she could block, and yeah, just thinking everything through. Mm-hmm. She mentioned she had five minutes. It's been a lot of discussion figuring yeah. out dragon stuff. This is a red brand you pitched here, right? Mm, probably. Because I don't see any. I don't think I run city. blues. I don't think they're three blocks, so I don't run the blues. Okay. She takes one oh, out yeah. of ten. Yeah, we were making up for the. And then I guess I just arsenal the other snatch. I think so. So the end of this chain, you got three, four, nine, nine damage pitching this brand. I wonder if pitching one of your finishers would have ended up a little bit better. Because you go flame, you, if you pitch a finisher for flame call awakening, you go Phoenix flame, you play the brand, you get to activate Phi to get another Phoenix flame. And then you can mm. end on either Lava Burst or Snatch. So you'd lose your arsenal, but you would get four extra damage. Which that sounds probably and worth threaten. it to me. Yeah, yeah. So she got to keep a four card hand also because we didn't present enough damage last turn. And now you're kind of forced to use your cards to yeah. block. Had I threatened another trigger at the end, this turn wouldn't be happening like this. Mm hmm. So at this point, you're in just really bad shape. Where yeah. you... Barely hanging on. Neck rim math is so weird. <laughs> And then from here, you're probably, I must, I don't remember this turn, but okay. It looks like she's got if each in hand too. If you had a popper here, there might be hope, but having to block with two cards is rough. I guess you're mm -hmm. going to one also, even if you do pop it. So you'd have to like stop her from making a dragon on her turn by attacking for so much. Probably like two block plus mask or something. Oh, 
ultimately it's not gonna matter because she has e-strike for seven after this but yeah <laughs> yep okay so big takeaways um shugo mm-hmm. um sequencing um art of war and then I think what was the what was the last one? The there uh, was the the turn that you needed to break the chain to get your phoenix line back in the graveyard. Yes, yeah, that one. And then I guess so. I'm, whenever I see two finishers, I'm always autopilot. Like, okay, can I play both of these? Look and see if I have snaps. And then, like, I'm never. I'm not really ever thinking, what's the benefit of me pitching this card for one resource. But I guess mm-hmm. in the case of like the last turn that we saw, I could have gotten an additional three and forced a mass trigger block. Well, I think you might have already masked that turn on the dragon. But it would have been three plus it would have well, been your third draconic sh- card to pick up your sh- Phoenix Flame to be able to attack with a Phoenix Flame also. So it would have been three damage from the brand and one with the Phoenix Flame. Are we sure that I got mask Let's on this turn? Uh, yeah, because you oh, drew yeah. both finishers off the snatch mask That's right. trigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Cause, okay. Because you had no finishers, then you drew both of them. So yeah, I guess, yeah. Being able to do stuff on the current turn is better than banking on being able to do it on the future turn, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't think that's always the case, but in general, like, four damage is usually worth more than an arsenal for most mid most situations. Four damage is just, like, a good good amount of damage. Usually a card's worth between three and four, so, like... Uh... It just means that four is usually more than that. And when you're when she's at such a low life total and you're at such a low life total, you really don't want to block. So you're even more incentivized to like try to push cards out of her hand. Yeah. So I don't I don't remember what her life total was. It was kinda hard to follow, but she was at eleven was she at eleven at the start of this turn? She was at 11 the turn that you killed the two dragons. She was at 11 okay. here. I think you got yep. some damage at her here on this turn. No, you didn't do any damage to her this turn. So she was still at 11 then. Hmm. I don't know if you could have actually forced cards out of her hand. 11's a lot of life. Yeah. Well, handling those dragons different would have pressured more on previous turns, so mm-hmm. the life total probably would not have gotten it. Either the life total would have been less, or she would have been starved for cards on these turns after. So, Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, okay. good takeaways. Did you have anything else in your notes? The last thing I have is Double Strike looked kind of met at a few spots i think part of that was you missed the shiko trigger on it a couple times yeah i think that would help it look a little bit better if you're getting the shiko triggers but if you're not shikoing and you're not art of war yet it's kind of just below rate yeah yeah i really don't like that it's not draconic either and none of the times that i played it were after a brand so Mm -hmm. i think i think i probably probably have even cut it since this game a few weeks ago Okay, yeah, it's... Um, I don't think it's in the file list that did really well at Worlds, so I, and it hasn't looked particularly impressive to me, so I'm... I, I think it's a good cut if you are the not attached list, to it. The list, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it. Well, I think, I think neither of the file lists had it. I don't think Rob's list had it either, but maybe I'm... Let me look, actually. I shouldn't say yeah. that. Yeah, Rob's list... So I, I kind of... I looked at both of them, and I 
can't say that I liked both or, or either one of them necessarily. Um, I think Rob's was only running one Phoenix Flame. And okay. it was also running Engulfing Flame Wave, which I am not a fan of. Um, okay. Oh, Rob was on two double strikes. Okay. okay. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. But Engulfing Flame Wave, that's fair. I yeah. think it's probably at least partially for the mirror where uh, neither player really wants to block very much. But the cost curve of it is awkward. I know you wrote a whole article about how it doesn't yeah. fit the cost curve very well. Yeah, yeah. I, I would just rather swing the sword mm-hmm. um, with a card from hand and have a resource floating for something than have a card that I have to pay for. Yeah. So I think like the dream use case of it is you pitch a blue, play a belittle, reveal another another three power thing, mm-hmm. and then you get your blue bidoism, and then you can do both engulfing flame wave plus sword. Mm-hmm. I think that's like what you're hoping to do from it. Or the other thing you can do sometimes is you can uh, you can tunic and sword and use your four resources that way. Yeah. But it's. It's kind of it, it, there's a lot of hands where it doesn't line up with your cost curve well. So I am yeah. not saying that it should be in your list. I just I think there are some things that are like that fall some cases that fall outside of it. It just doesn't fit your normal cost curve. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think the other um, the other weirdness that we talked about was um, blossoming or blossom mm-hmm. spring. Mm-hmm. Um. Running Tunic in this match definitely makes sense. I agree with that. Because it was um, turn six or turn seven when you died, so you could have gotten one additional resource and one life out of it. Yeah. Which would have helped. For sure. <laughs> several several small things that help. Yeah. Was there anything, like, I guess matchup specific that you think I should watch out for besides of course the, the Yender eye thing. Um, is there anything that like being paired into drone eye you picked up that I might need to keep in mind or just might not know. So one thing I noticed was you didn't draw any poppers. Do you have any in your deck? C and C's. Okay. Did you, you did you, I think uh, I don't think I saw any of that game. Yeah, I don't think I saw any either because nothing got popped, and I don't think you ever attacked or Arsenal to CNC. So. Right. Yeah. Um. Especially when they're playing like the bigger dragons, like Necria or Vinny. If you if you pop one of those, and like you get a bunch of tempo from it. Cool. You okay. get like a pretty big card advantage just because they spent two cards and an Ash to attack you with a thing that just like dies. Yeah, I think that's the only one I have um, in the list. You just have one I'd, copy. Three CNCs. Yeah, I, I think it was just unlucky that game. I didn't see any. Um, mm. The I don't run a race faces. Um, yeah, I think it's just the three CNCs. Okay. Yeah, that's the other. That's the only other matchup specific thing that I noticed was just like nothing got popped the whole game, and I feel like if nothing gets popped, then it's a pretty, it's a pretty close matchup. If you pop like one or two key dra- key dragons, then it's like pretty rough for the Dromai. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, if I don't talk to you again, have a good weekend, and we'll catch up next week. All right. Sounds good. You have a good weekend, too, Will. Thanks, Mike. See ya. Bye.